Calling all explorers and painters. Hello. Welcome to another episode of Adventures in Painting, the Paint Along podcast. That's right, you can paint along with me. Uh, and today, as you see, we're going to do a desert scene. I love desert scenes. I've never painted one, so let's see how it turns out. So this episode is called Dust in the Wind because I'm sure there's a lot of dust in the wind there uh, and you can just imagine maybe you went out on a hike and discovered all these beautiful vistas out in the desert and that's what we're going to paint today. Okay, and uh, also our topic of discussion is going to be image streaming. Probably you have never heard of image streaming, have you? It is uh, something that I do. It's very, very related to dreaming. The last series, the last painting we did, um, it was called Leaving at Sunrise. And the topic for that painting was lucid dreaming. Now we're going to do image streaming. What is image streaming? Image streaming is learning how to uh, see very vivid dreamlike images when you close your eyes. And um, it's related to hypnagogia. If you know anything about hypnagogia, um, that's also related to lucid dreaming and the lucid dreaming practices. So this all ties together, learning Image streaming will just add another layer to your uh, adventure of exploring consciousness. So, um, I have a video we're going to watch. We'll get to that in a minute. And right now, we're going to get started on our painting. So this is Dust in the Wind. So let's start a new layer. I'm going to turn that off. Blank canvas. Yay! Um, and, oh, I forgot. So, drink of choice today. Coors, Coors beer. As you may know, I like to sip and paint at the same time. Because why not? There's a little ASMR for you. Okay. We're going to have to lay down a base color here. So I'm going to say dusty orange. Let's go for a nice dusty orange. Oddly enough, I already have one in my palette here. That was not intentional, but hey, I'm going to go for it. Saves me time. All right. Just lay it on real quick. Uh, my opacity is at 4%, which is not going to work for me. Help. Help me. I can't find out. Hang on. It's not working. Hang on one second. There. We'll get to it. You know, one thing, if you've been following along, uh, technical difficulties is no stranger to me. All right, is this going to... Now, now we're painting. Painting with color. Yay. Burnt orange. Um, very slowly, apparently. I'm going to have to figure that out. Should be going a lot faster than that. Uh, okay. Maybe I'll, like, speed it up a little bit in post-processing. There we go, finally. I think it's because my brush is so big. But that's the first, that's the last, be the first and last time we're going to have a brush that big. So let me go back to a small brush. My computer is like, eh, help. And I'm going to pull up 
the source image on a second screen, I do recommend that you do that as well so that you can have something to look at. You don't have to keep flipping back and forth if you're using Photoshop. Uh, I will flip back and forth on this too, but it's nice to have a second screen to paint from. Um, and um, yeah, I'm curious, are you using, are you doing digital paint? Are you doing acrylics, oils? What are you doing? Let me know in the comments below. Also in the video description, you can find the source image to download. It's free, 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 free. My favorite price. All right. I think now we're going to just do a little bit of sky up above, sky color. And it's not very, it's like very, very gray, bluish gray, kind of like that maybe. Let's see. Let's look at the image real quick. Yeah. Very bluish gray. So I'm going to lay that down. Um, on a s another layer. So this layer is going to be called background. Not to be confused with the other background layer that I don't want to use. That layer's background, and then I'm gonna make a new layer. Uh, I've lost my cursor. Okay, so, new layer called Sky. Very original. All right, let's just lay that on. You know what? And I'm going to turn the opacity down to 61-ish. see what that does. And the horizon, if you look at the source image, the horizon is about halfway down. So that's where we'll stop. Just laying on a nice base color for the sky. The reason I turned the opacity down is so that it still retains some of that background color and um, and we'll build on top of all that, but that really ties uh, the whole image together. And now I'm going to go really low and do it one more time. Okay. Yay, look at that. We're done. Dust in the wind. Just kidding. That's like just the beginning. Um, and we'll do a bit on the clouds. So let me throw some color down for clouds and then we'll get to our video. Uh, clouds. Now, clouds are white, of course, and um, got to have a good opacity here. So let me try that. And we're just going to follow the basic shape of what it looks like the clouds are doing in the picture. And then um, we'll use our little blending tool and blend it all together. Now, there is sort of a darker blue. Blue, I need some blue. Maybe that. Maybe that color. And it just kind of like fits in here, a little bit here. Um, one thing that's interesting, if you look at this image, look at the image, the horizon has 
a very dusty orange color just like the uh, desert must be reflecting that. So we'll have to make sure we leave some of that in our uh, in our painting. All right. Now I'm going to turn this down. There's a little bit more blue over here, but it's more subtle. So I'm going to do there. There we go. Now this just looks like crayon coloring right now, <laughs> uh, but. You'll see. Once we start blending uh, and just start making sure we got the right colors and everything, it'll come together. Hopefully. Uh, I have faith. I have faith. It'll come together. Yes. Yes, it will. All right. Now, just a little bit more of the clouds. Um, on a low opacity like I have. Just edge that out a little bit. Just wherever you see the clouds. Don't get too technical right now um, because like I said we'll use our blending brush make it all make sense later. Just try to intuitively copy uh, the source image. Not rocket science. All right, there's a little there, a little streak there. Um, which is way too large. Hang on. That's too small. It's all trial and error. Which you would know if you followed my videos, Basically half of my painting is trial and error, but I think it usually turns out okay. Uh, whatever. All right. You ready to get started on our topic? You know, um, I've been practicing image streaming for a few years. I don't know, four or five years. I love it. It's so much fun. Um, and basically you're teaching yourself to almost dream while you're awake. So uh, you'll see you'll see images with you'll close your eyes and then images will start coming and then you uh, you have to really learn how to not break out of those. Like, sometimes your first instinct, when you see an image, your first instinct is to like, ah, that's so cool. And then it's gone because you broke out of it. Uh, no, you have to learn to relax into it and just let it come, let it come. And soon you'll just be seeing movies in your mind. Uh, it's really, really cool stuff. And there are some people that don't think they have the ability to visualize at all. Like, and it's called aphantasia. And at one point I thought I had aphantasia and image streaming relieved me of that. So uh, if you have problems visualizing, this is a great practice for you. And if you don't have problems visualizing, this is also a great practice for you. This will greatly impact and change your life. I promise you. Just give it a try. I need to add a bit more blue over here and then we'll get to our video. Just some blue over here. There we go. There we go. Every time you feel like you need to add more color, just go ahead and do it. No one's going to care. It's your painting. It doesn't have to look like mine. It doesn't have to look, look like the picture. Uh, in fact, I always try to make my paintings look different somehow than the picture. Not that I'm doing a photocopy anyway. I'm not that good. But I think you should always try to add elements that aren't in the pictures because 
It's a painting. Otherwise, we could just be looking at the picture. No, there's... Um, you have the ability to change that and add things. And that's why um, painting is an adventure. Every time you paint, it's an adventure. Um, and I'm glad. I'm glad. Thank you for coming on this adventure with me. Hopefully I'm not going to steer you wrong here. And if you see me doing something, you're like, oh, what is he doing? Hey, comment below. Tell me how I could have done it better. Maybe I'll try out your method. Try your, your method next time. All right, I'm just adding some yellow, and then also some of that orange needs to come up here. If you look at the source image, you would see that. So there, and there's some... It's really dark over here on the right. You can darken that up later. And it comes there. So I think that's really cool that the... Uh, I don't live... I live in Florida, so I don't see the desert. Um, I'm assuming it's reflecting the color of the sand, and I think that's pretty cool. Uh, if you live in the desert, and you know awesome things about it, hey, let me know in the comments below. I mean, it's reflecting it so much, it's like way up here in the clouds too, as uh, shadows in the shadows. Alright, so a little bit there. I promise you, when we blend this together, it's going to look so cool. I say with utter confidence. <laughs> Not... No, I'm, I'm sure it's going to look good. Okie dokie. There we go. There's a nice little base. Base for the sky. Base for the ground. Now it's just time to start adding stuff. Adding elements. Um, but first, we're going to go to our video. So, one second. Alright, so I found this video earlier. I thought that... I only watched the beginning of it, but I think he's going to do a good job explaining at least the basics of it. Um, so, let me hit play. play. Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Jonah, and in this video, I'm going to try my best to explain image streaming to you. This is extremely complex, but the reason why you'd want to actually learn this is it's taken at least me from a state of full aphantasia from birth, zero visuals when I close my eyes, not even like anything, nothing. Uh, and, and also an ability to you know use other senses in an imaginary way to being able to have you know full passive visuals throughout the day and also have a practice. And I'm just gonna start day. doing some blending while we're listening to that. It's one where it's like super neon extreme VR like visuals in a 3D space that I can move around and create storylines out of and relive old memories and ask my subconscious you know I'm gonna use my smudge tool answers. fascinating stuff and I don't know why no one else does it. Everyone thinks it's total bullshit, I guess, and it's not. Um, it's a real thing. Oh, it's and real. I've gotten I promise myself you. at least from a state where I couldn't do this at all to a state where now I can do it. And then if I do it more frequently over a longer period of time, I've been doing this on and off for about five years, it can get uh, really strong. And even those visuals. So this is, um, one second, this is the blending tool. And I have it on 37 strength. We'll just see what that does for now. And um, right now, I'm just going to do some left and right sweeping mo motions to... Is that doing anything? I don't know what just happened. Oh, no. Okay. Is that doing anything? Yes, yes it is. It's subtle, but um, the left and right sweeping motions will just get us started on our blending journey. Blending journey. So I'll play around with that. Let me turn the video back on. 
can, uh, you know, um, impose themselves onto my, my just normal visuals. So in this subreddit, there's three kinds of visuals that are described. There is agogic, which is what image streaming is, which I'm going to explain to you. There is a traditional fantasia, which is like looking at a 2D screen in the mind's eye. And there's profantasia, which is being able to visualize things like on top of the world in your normal, regular waking vision. And the more that I do image streaming, I've gotten to experience all three of these types. But image streaming is definitely the agogic type. And the big difference is the agogic visuals are something that you're seeing when you're looking at your closed eyeballs, okay? When you're seeing the black of your closed eyes, and you can get this kind of swirling visual static to eventually turn into uh, a very realistic, very strong visuals that honestly feel like you're looking at a, a VR headset, but they're always, always shifting. They're always moving. Uh, and, and with enough control and technique, you can use this skill in a bunch of really interesting ways. You can rotate things, you can uh, use it to solve creative problems, a lot of that kind of stuff. So there's a lot here, and I'm going to do my best to explain it in a way that you can follow. And if you have any questions, just ask, and, and I will do my best to answer, because I've never really talked to anybody about this before in real life. And uh, I've never really seen anybody on the internet talking about it, aside from- like, No, it's not very talked about a lot. But it is a real thing, and uh, this is my experience. So when I started it, I found this stuff through a website called Project Renaissance. That website does not exist anymore. I don't know when it went down, but you probably can access it on like a Wayback Machine or something. But I really instead would suggest you pick up the book The Einstein Factor by Wim Lunger. And in that book, he describes this practice of image streaming as a way to increase your intelligence. I personally don't like that framing of it because yes, I do think this could make you smarter. I really do. I think it can make you sharper. When I do it, I feel like I'm on. It's like the craziest stimulant you could ever imagine taking for a little bit. It uh, can get you to think in more complex and out of the box ways. And so those are all amazing potential benefits. But what I found to be way more exciting and useful in my life is that it is a way of creating visuals, even if you're starting off from literally zero. And it's a way of experiencing other senses. And I've even had just crazy experiences, reliving old memories, um, ego dissolution. I'll explain some of these things in a little bit. Uh, yeah, so one of the reasons that it's said to increase or make you smarter they actually say increases IQ is, uh, you know, your working memory, being able to visualize things for problem solving, uh, like, um, like Nikola Tessa was said to be able to invent, make an entire invention using basically image streaming. So he could visualize, uh, let's say he was going to invent a coil or whatever. He invented a lot of things. Uh, his coil. He could see it in his mind's eye. He could rotate it. He could put a screw there. He could put a screw there. Uh, he could do whatever he wanted because now and he was probably really a natural at this. A lot of people are natural at this. And they think, oh, people have to learn this. Uh, yeah, it's not that normal <laughs> to be natural at it. Well, it is, but you, you lose that as you grow up, unfortunately, because we don't practice it. Um, so, but I don't, I don't particularly, I, I kind of agree with him. I don't particularly agree, uh, use it for increasing intelligence. Like, I don't even care how intelligent I am. It's fun. <laughs> and that's why I do it. All right, let me. Now, the first thing, if you want to get started with this, the first thing I recommend is that you uh, commit to doing this for about a month. Okay, if you don't get any, any progress in a month of actually trying it hard, then maybe give up, okay? Or maybe find a different way to approach it or something like that or try a different visualizing method. But I, I would give yourself at least a month and try to do this every day for minimum 10, but ideally like 20. It doesn't days. have to be every day. That's what I did when I started. So but the that's not a bad like suggestion. 
I'm going to start by just explaining the the uh, vocal uh, um, verbal way of describing things and then how you actually use that with your visual and how you kind of maintain focus on all of the different things all at once because this is really hard. It's a really hard thing to do, but it does work. So the idea I'm going to use uh, this as a prop, okay? So the idea is that you're supposed to, um, and this is actually a really good way to do it, is that you start by um, explaining, by, by describing something that is in your room or in your environment to start before you ever start closing your eyes and actually giving this a shot because you need to develop this ability to verbally process things uh, well. And so let's say I have this like little video. Yeah, so that's one of the hardest things almost learning it is you do, you have to become fluent in visual description. Um, and you think, oh, God, I know how to describe things. Just wait, just wait, wait till you try it because you have to be quick. You have to be quick and on it. And that takes a lot of practice. Um, so, you know, we could use our painting. Let's say, let's pretend this is an image you're seeing with your, with your eyes closed. It's not much going on. We'll, we'll use the source image. There we go. Okay. Uh, I've accidentally painted over it a little bit, but anyway, so we're going to describe it. Let's just quick fire. Um, it's a desert. There's, there's mountain type things in the background. The sun's peeking up over the horizon. The sun's very bright. Uh, it's gets bluish, bluish gray. The higher you go into the sky on the edges, it's kind of a dark orangey. Uh, and then Obviously, we're in the desert, so there's like some dry weed type stuff, and there's some greenery. Uh, uh, blah, blah, blah. It's hard. <laughs> it's hard. You have to become fluent in that to do this exercise. Uh, but it's worth it, so you should learn how. This is my suggestion. Learn how. Become fluent in describing things. And um, you should start that now before you go into your first exercise. Here, these are fake flowers, okay. And you would initially like look at something in your environment. This is the first step that I would go through if you're new with this. And you look at it and you start explaining it, everything you can think about to explain this. And, and ideally, you're going to use all of your senses. You're going to explain how it looks. You're going to explain the color of it. You're going to explain the smell of it. You're going to explain the the touch of it and the textures of it. And you're going to explain the temperature of it. Like as met, and even you're going to explain if you can, your own emotional reaction to it. So everything that you can throw on it, and you're going to do this fast verbally, ideally without stop. Yeah, and that's what I tend to forget to do. I'm I'm so always focused on the visual. Uh, so let's try again. Okay, we're in the desert. Okay, oh, it's hot. Can you feel that heat? It's like 100 degrees. Um, I can almost feel the sun. Even though it's sunrise, it's beating on my face like crazy. And um, I can hear this, the leaves rustling. And when I reach down and touch the dirt, it's like dry and crumbly. And makes my hands feel real dry uh smells like i don't know what does the desert smell like i don't know i don't go to the desert <laughs> maybe this was a bad representation <laughs> but what would it smell like i don't know like dirt i guess a lot of sand is that red clay i don't know probably maybe What's there in the desert? This is Utah. Obviously, it's Monument Valley. I've been to Monument Valley, Monument Valley when I was a kid. My grandma and grandpa took us there, me and my brother. Um, I really, really love this area of the United States. And we went there. We went to the Painted Desert, uh, Petrified Forest, 
went down to Arizona, Grand Canyon. That was a trip of a lifetime, and I really, really appreciate them for taking us there. Okay. Back to this. Hopping for long periods of time. It is a mental workout. It's really, really hard. And so <laughs> instead of doing it when you're just looking at the blacks of your eyes, let's do it in the real world first. So looking at this plan. Now, I want you to just look at this. I'm going to share it to the camera there. Okay. And so what I would do here is I would say, um, again, looking in the real world, I see a, uh, a, a you know a group of flowers that are in a glass vase, and in the glass vase, I see that it, there's at the top it's uh, it's a bit bulbous, and then it comes up, and there's a lip at the top where the flowers come out of, and then it goes down here, and there is like uh, um, something that expands out, kind of it almost looks like a beaker, and on the bottom there is this ridgy texture, and I can run my finger over the texture, and I can feel all of the different ridges as it passes beneath as it passes beneath my skin, and I see. Uh, these plants and I see the flowers coming up and the stems of the flowers are the shade of a pale uh, grayish green that has like slight yellow undertones and I see all of the different um, leaves and if I touch the leaves they are um, slightly scratchy and they uh, actually if I look at them closely they have this very um, thin weave and I can kind of see through that weave and I see all the ridges of the flowers and all of the different uh, shadows that are cast by the light that is behind me and I see that some flowers are curving down, some flowers are going up and some are fanning out to the sides and then as I go up the flowers and I see the top of the flowers the actual all the petals and they are a variety of different colors some are yellow, some are orange, some are red, uh, some have like kind of like a sunburst uh, kind of a kind of a thing where it starts off yellow on the inside and goes red to the outside. And I see the inside of the flowers and the different, uh, what do you call it, stamens or pistols or whatever. I don't remember flower terminology. Um, and uh, I see that, uh, I see the, the different things that are sticking out of the flower in the middle and they're white and or and the inside of the flowers are brown and I can touch the flowers and they're soft kind of like the feeling of silk and I can smell the flowers and they smell sweet and fragrant and I um the flowers make me feel happy like I'm uh, you know safe inside my house on a fall day or something like that <sighs> that's what it's like okay it's this big stream of consciousness thought that is using as many senses as you can pull into it. The texture, the color, the smell, the taste even if that's applicable, you know. And you... Yes, uh, you but it's worth it. Things. It's worth it's it, a I promise. Crazy, crazy amount of detail. Now, you can imagine, it gets pretty tiring when you're talking like that, okay? Yeah, it does. And <laughs> you find that eventually um, doesn't take very long. It puts you into a kind of a trance state. You know, even when you're doing it waking and you're just describing your world. And this was really hard for me when I started. And these days, as you can see, I was able to just kind of go into it. It's, it's not so hard because I've been practicing this way of speaking on and off for the past five years. And now let's talk about how this actually works with visuals and your eyes. Because if you're starting out with absolutely nothing, how do you get to the point where you're seeing visuals, right? So we'll get into that. So as I said, this is the gadget. Uh, one second. I have lost my drawing ability. I'll be right back. Yeah, yeah I can draw again. Type of visuals, it's kind of like you're looking into right. a 3D space. So it's not like you're looking at a screen and it's flat, but you're looking into a 3D expansive space. Okay, that's important because you want to use that 3D space in a way. And in the beginning, you're going to just, you know, close your eyes. You might just see black. And I, I don't see black when I close my eyes now. I see very faint visuals. Um, that can sometimes be, be very strong. But when I started, I saw black. And I, did, I saw black for about two weeks, I'm doing this like 20, 30 minutes a day. Um, I can't remember. I don't can't find my notes that I took at the time about the experience. I'm not exactly sure. He was starting from zero. He too had aphantasia. Something tangible, okay? Now, when I started and I was 
you know, looking at the blackness of my eyes, I wouldn't see anything. Now, in the Einstein Factor book, he goes over a whole bunch of ways that you can simulate this. One way that this um, practice has been kind of straw man and saying, that, oh, it's just you rubbing your eyes or something. That's just one of like 50 different methods that he goes over that you can use to um, maybe start to do. The one that I would try uh, is maybe one of the candle and stick it in front of you and see if you can see any sort of changes. I think that uh, that potentially could work. Um, I haven't done it, but I think it potentially could work. Maybe even just looking at a light or something, it gives you something. And you start explaining literally anything you see, and immediately it's a crazy beam of subconscious word association, where you see some, you know, and literally anything. If it's totally black, you just make it up, okay? I, I see a dog, I see uh, a rough collie dog, and the fur of the dog is, you know. I've seen a lot of dogs, actually. It's funny. The dog is big mane. The dog is, is very large with this long tongue that has this texture, uh, you know, this, this uh, um, kind of coarse texture on its tongue that's rough and scratchy to the touch with its wet nose and its wet eyes. That's funny because I actually had, I was doing image streaming and I saw a dog, I saw the side of his face and then he turned around and like literally licked my face. Uh, so it's funny he said that. That are looking at me, you just gotta use as much senses and just think about it. Think of all the details that you could potentially see on a thing that you're describing. But the important thing is, you're not just describing a thing, okay? And at, at start, you know, you might see a blob, then you just have to call that blob something, okay? You have to call that blob a car, okay? Let's say a car. And then you have to ask yourself, you know, this is happening, you know, in, in the spur of the moment, okay, what kind of car is it? Uh, it's a um, it's a convertible, okay? And it's a red convertible. You can just start describing the appearance of it, the look of the tires and how shiny it is and how smooth and cold it is if you were to touch it. You always want to explain in third person. But once you're done explaining the car, unless you see some visuals, because if you don't, then you want to just keep it, keep it building up the scene. If you do so explain some, see some visuals, I'll explain that in a second. But if you don't see any visuals, then just think, where is the car? Well, the car is on the street. Now describe the street. Where is the street? The street is in a city. So what would be in a city? Oh, there's, there's buildings and there's people and there's the sky overhead. And you're just thinking of all of this stuff and everything that you add to the scene, you start describing in excessive detail and you do it fast. And then you need to go so and if you don't see that stuff, make it up, and it might just start appearing anyway. So fast that you don't have the time to judge yourself and be uh, in your head about it. You need to just go fast enough where it is literally a spin of pieces, okay? hope that really makes sense. Because I find that the speed is, is a big thing. If you don't do it with speed, I, I find that I just fall asleep. <laughs> it's just, it's a lot, okay? And so you gotta use enough speed to keep yourself focused and keep yourself in it. It might tear you out more, but uh, it's, it's I think, the way that you actually will have success in this. So if you uh, if you keep going that and it's totally black, then you just start explaining something else. And you'll find that even if you don't see visuals, your bandwidth for explaining this kind of stuff will increase, okay? You'll be able to think about more ideas that you can add to your scene, more things that you can explain about your scene. And then if you fit and fill that scene out, you come up with a new scene, okay? And, and literally just take anything and build it into some verbal ideas, verbal construction. Um, I'm going to pull up, I actually transcribed several of my sessions so i'm going to pull that up and i'll be right back okay so i'll read this one one of the aspects i don't know if he's talked about it yet or not uh, or if he will you record yourself so you record yourself you can do uh like a voice recorder or there's an app on your phone you can use, whatever. Record yourself. So you're not just describing this stuff, but you need to record yourself. And when you replay it, what'll happen is, so you've done your session, then you replay the recording. As you're listening to yourself describe all these things, they should pop back up into your visual visualization. You should see these things again. And um, so I wrote down, I transcribed 
a few of them. So I'll read this one. This is from January, or January, July 31st, 2021. Prior to this, I activated the phosphines by applying very light pressure to the eyeballs. So what you do is, you don't have to do this, but it helps jumpstart things. Take your palms, and you can like warm them up if you want to. Put them here on your eyeballs, not very hard. And you just lightly press until you start seeing, seeing things, uh, not images, but it'll be like geometric patterns, waves, uh, all kinds of stuff. And what that does is it just gets things going to give you something to describe. Because again, the very beginning of this is describing, describe, describe, describe so fast that you've turned off your analytical mind and are open to more subtle forms of consciousness. Yeah, my, my computer is loving my drawing tablet right now. I'm probably going to have to buy a new one. Yay! Yay me! Okay. The, my blue blob is dancing like an electrical pulsating thing in the center of my vision. Blue blob. Whenever, a lot of times when I close my eyes and I start to really start to relax and this blue blob will come into the center of my vision. It's like cobalt blue, maybe dark, really dark blackish blue. And, and it gets really bright too, but. And it'll just start doing this. When it get big or it'll get real small. Um, and a lot of times images will start coming up in that. Um, right now in the recording, it's dancing around in the center of my vision. Much, much bluer than when I say the bluish white static field I see whenever I close my eyes. Uh, this is definitely blue, definitely blue. So a lot of, you know, when I close my eyes most of the time, it's never fully black. It's more like a static field that's kind of bluish black. But the blue blob is different. <laughs> Noticeably different. Um, it's doing a lot of things in the center of my vision. It's really hard to describe. It's making some triangular forms. At one time, I thought it looked, kind of looked like someone sitting in the middle, in the middle of my vision, someone sitting, like an angel form sitting in the middle. And as I'm saying that, I'm getting the black outline, the black outline form, silhouette, of someone sitting in lotus pose, like with the arms stretched out doing mudras. So, <laughs> which I don't, I don't sit in lotus, well... Sometimes I sit in lotus, but mudras like, um, <laughs> that's what it was doing. Okay. And that just popped up in the center of my vision. Basically, the whole form was black and was outlined in the bluish blob color. So the bluish blob outlined the silhouette kind of pulsating around it. It's faintly coming, it's faintly coming up as I'm describing it now. So like I said, anytime you start to describe something that you did see, it most likely will bring it back up. Now it kind of looks like a crow. Now like an eagle. I see like wings spread out like an eagle. I can almost see individual feathers on the right side and on the left. Looks like the eagle on the Hylian shield. Hylian shield. Oh, Zelda. Eagle on the Hylian shield. It's just a symbol that they use in that game. Um, please note that the images above were not super clear, although the ind individual feathers on the eagle wings were pretty distinct. 
All of the above images were more like faint impression type images. So I was just getting started at this point. This is not the goal. The goal is to see high definition, very, very vivid images. Okay, so I just saw a row of houses and I was across maybe the yard and they were up high a little bit with the fence in front. So they were like townhouses. And I was somehow standing on the other side of the yard just looking, looking at them. I don't know what architecture, maybe something from Miami or Bahamas. Um, I do remember they were very colorful. Like um, when you look at tropical type houses, how there's a blue one, a yellow one, and a pink one. It was like that. Um, now I've lost my fault. Lost my place. It was like a row. You know, sorry, this beer always gets me burping. Okay. Uh, like a row of townhouses with columns in front of the door. So there was, there were townhouses, but the doors had these pillars, these columns in front. And maybe it was like three or four bluish and yellow painted. I don't know. And as I keep describing it, I see, I can see triangular forms. Are they, are they called eaves over where the columns would be? I can see a bit of the roof too. My pet bunny just thumped at me, and now I see an outline of a chocolate bunny. Now I see a more realistic bunny ear. Yep. So the houses. I could make out windows, I think, in front of each one. It was such a quick thing. It was like out of a dream. It had a wall in front, like a stone wall, I think. Um, I was maybe standing across the road or something. I can kind of see the wall with little shrubs in front of it. Probably a different wall, but I'm seeing some kind of wall with cast iron bars above it. It's just a very faint impression. So this was something that was coming back up in my imagery as I was describing what I had just saw. Okay, I feel like I'm in a honeycomb. Oh, this is funny. Or some kind of nebula or something. Mosaic. Ether ethereal. So this... Instead of this time, instead of seeing an image, the houses, I'm going to unplug that because it just keeps speaking. Technical difficulties is my middle name. Uh, so instead of seeing an image this time, I was, I felt like I was in a bubble or a honeycomb, as I said. Um, and I saw the little hexagon shapes um, comprising this bubble or whatever. Um, I kind of saw Hobbes from Calvin and Hobbes when he does this cute little jazz dancing, but it was a mirrored image from top and bottom. It was very small and faint, but definitely Hobbes. If you don't know who Hobbes is, I don't know what's wrong with you. Calvin and Hobbes, my favorite comic strip when I was a child. I still love it, of course. And Garfield. Uh, and Archie. <laughs> but Cal uh, Hobbes, I don't know if you've ever seen the image uh, where he's dancing. Uh, Hobbes dancing. Um, this one. I'm going to say it was like this one. And, um, but it was a mirror image, so I saw him, but then reflected on the bottom. It was like he was dancing on water, I guess, if you want to think of it that way. So he, you saw the reflection of it too, or I did. <laughs> okay. That was Hobbes, dancing. Yay. Okay, I saw a girl with pink hair, and I just saw like the top half of her face from the nose up. Not even the bottom of the nose, just up to her, up to her eyes, and then up to her pink hair. And then her hair became, and then her hair came down longer than I could see her face. So I could only see from here up on her face, but her hair I could see all the way down. Um, it 
It was like she was looking at me through a mailbox slot or something. Because I, I could just almost see like, like this. Which actually is kind of like a um, graphic novel panel, which is funny because I had just saw something from the comic strip. I just saw a dog. I was right up in its face. It was a ter terrier. I could see its triangle ear on the right side of my vision and its face on the left. So it's pointing that way, I guess. Pointing that way. Anyway. Uh, then it turned to lick my face. Oh, this is when that happened. When it licked me, there was like a black dot on the triangle ear. The black dot lingered as the dog faded away. Okay, I saw a tractor. At first, it was like a lilac field. I think I meant lavender field. Lavender, like um, it, like the pictures in France where it's just like a field of lavender. And, but then it was a dirt road that a tractor might go down. And very cartoonish man and woman riding on the tractor. Just a quick flash, but yeah. And then a little fence beside the dirt road, they would have been going down. So I was seeing a dirt road, a tractor, cartoony man and woman in the tractor and a fence running along the road. Um, and as I'm saying it, I'm seeing the little country road with the two little dirt paths and the green grass growing in between where the tires go. And I, it's fading, but yeah, it's basically gone now. The couple were character heads, cari caricature heads on the tractor. I'm still learning how to speak my language. Sorry. It went by real fast, but it was cute. At first I thought I was seeing a lavender field, and then I saw the tractor, and then the lavender field turned into that tractor road with the fence running along it. I was trying to see Mickey Mouse, but instead I saw a cat right up, right as I looked up at... <laughs> I was trying to see Mickey Mouse, but instead I saw a cat right as I looked up a bit. When I looked up, it lost focus and the cat faded. It was a real quick flash. Ended session. Okay, so that's all on that session. And um, let me figure out my drawing tablet since it decides when it wants to work and when it doesn't. And we'll get finished up on this video here and also finished up on laying down the sky. All right. One moment. I'm back. Okay, let me play that. Builds out this, this world that you're seeing. Once you've done this for a little bit of time, at least in my experience, I've started seeing this white kind of shifting film in my vision, like, like a uh, gloss, white gloss, kind of indistinct, hard to even tell me there in the beginning. And then that's where this starts really working. And if you see that to start, that's great. That's, that's something that you can, you can uh, start working with. So then you take these blobs and you do the same thing. You turn the blobs into some sort of an association. That blob is a bat and that bat is flying. And then imagine yourself like following the bat, like you're the camera in the video game. You're on a video game, a camera, like doing no clip and some like old, uh, uh, you know, video game, you can kind of fly around or something like that, camera and halo or something like that. Like, that's the idea, okay? You can fly around and you can kind of see something. But you can also do this from your own perspective, like you're there and you see your body in your hands. Uh, you can do this from the perspective that you're another character, you're an animal or something. Well, that was one of the examples that I saw in the industry book, I think, or somewhere else. Um, and you start responding to the actual visuals that you see. Now, if you're lucky, those kind of swirling white masses will start actually turning into things. They'll actually start turning into visuals. And those visuals might shock you at how freaking vivid they can get. I was amazed doing this like maybe two weeks in. And I remember I saw, um, it was like, I don't, I don't even know how to describe it. Uh, I saw this one, uh, here's an here's image. I, I saw this one like golden, uh, and marble city that looked very like ancient Greek style with these statues of, 
you know, beautiful men and women. And, um, and that was like the city, the center of the city. And I had other visions of different, like, yeah, that's really cool. Oh, oops, sorry. Hang on. Oh, I messed up completely on that. Uh, but that's really cool. One of the things I was thinking about, uh, talking about with image streaming, it will develop your ability to paint without having to look at an image, which is, we're looking at an image and there's nothing wrong with that. But what if he could have painted that scene he just described? The ancient, ancient city. What if he could have painted that? That would be so cool. And I do think that you could learn to do that as well. I like doing it with my voice because... Now I have to figure out where I was. And you, have to, you can't do too much of looking at it or then this um, uh, woman who was like made up of all of these neon uh, lines that were like your subconscious is just going to start pumping out these burrows of the city and the different visual stuff. Amazed. Doing this like maybe two weeks in. And I remember I saw, um, it was like, I don't, I don't even know how to describe it. Um, I saw this one, uh, here's an, here's an image. I, I saw this one like golden, uh, and marble city that looked very like ancient Greek style with these statues of, you know, beautiful men and women. And, um, and that was like the city, the center of the city. And I had other visions of different like boroughs of the city and the different visual styles. One was very like European, very like kind of like Italian, old school Italian streets or something like that, but very vivid colors, purples and, and flowers. And, and I kind of was imagining the smells of all this. And I was like, oh my God, this is crazy. Going from no visuals to that is like, Wow. Someone in a comment here said it was like, you have to come lift the veil. There's like a veil blocking you to squelch the sculpture. And you, you get past this veil, you, you lower down this, your, your inhibition to, to dive into your subconscious mind. And then you can, you know, get to a place where your subconscious is just going to start pumping out these visuals that you see. And oftentimes they're super surprising and unexpected and and, and, you know, there's even other situations where, like, I remember one time I, I was, like, nothing was really happening. And then I saw, like, some sort of a fantasy thing. I was watching, like, a dragon kind of fly down. And then all of a sudden, I was looking at this, this, um, uh, what? Hang on. I have completely lost the ability to do anything in Photoshop. I, the problem is... The stupid spacing thing. I don't even want to get into it. Um, basically, it just makes it lag so much that it takes forever to catch up with itself. That's the fun of blending in Photoshop with a slow computer. Uh, that's okay. I've got my resolution at 700 pixel or 700 DPI, whatever. It's a really big picture. So I don't blame it for not being able to keep up with itself. I'm going to be right back. Okay, so I'm just going to turn the spacing off completely. The spacing causes the blending brush for whatever reason, to kill my f computer. <laughs> and I love my computer. I don't want to kill it. So we're just going to do without it. That's It gives more of a blot blotchy effect to the clouds, which uh, is good in some cases, not so much in this case. Uh, but we don't have a choice. Uh, that's okay. If I zoom in, look, look what happens. If I zoom in, you can see kind of see what it's doing here. And that's okay. This is still just going to be the base 
Good thing is you can fix anything. You can fix anything in pain. Right? Probably. So, let's see but I can still ignore me. Sorry. Okay, let's finish this video and then I'll give you your homework. I made up of all of these neon uh, lines that were going down her body. And I was the perspective of, and then I was looking at the woman, and then I was the woman. And then I saw my own hands in front of me dissolve into sand, and that sand would fall to the floor. And I felt my consciousness falling apart in like a million pieces. This is the kind of stuff that I would imagine you would experience like on psychedelics or something. Yeah, but I did it completely sober, and I got the experience. I'm like, wow, that was that was something interesting. Um, because that's the thing—you do this sober. In fact, I find that if you're if you're on any sort of substances whatsoever, this is probably not going to work. Okay, if you're someone who gets high every day, it's like it's gonna—you need to be sharp to do this. You need to be really freaking sharp. Probably need to drink a cup of coffee and like it is. It's not. Um, it's kind of weird though because you're also kind of need to be relaxed enough to focus on the visual. So someone in the inner streaming post in the subreddit said you have to kind of divide your attention between your visual, uh, um, your, your visual uh, screen or the, the kind of scene that you're looking at, but also your thoughts about it. And you have to, you can't do too much of looking at it or then the, the stream will stop. But you can't only speak about it or you will stop having visuals. It's, it's kind of this weird thing. Like you can't control the visuals, but the more that you talk in... All right, did a lot of blend. I had to turn my spacing back on. I did a lot of blending. I'm going to let it catch up with itself. Ways that you would expect will start matching up with what you're explaining. And that was my experience. About two weeks in, I saw some really crazy strong visuals, and from that I was kind of hooked, but it's very hard to do, okay? Very hard to do. And I find that often I just really tired with this and I just stop for a month on and then pick it back up. Oh, I'm going to start an issue. And I spend a couple of days and I'm like, wow, this is amazing. How does everyone know about this? And then I get tired. <laughs> I stop. Um, I've just been doing this on the long term. I've been doing this on the long term. I find it's really important to make it easy for yourself. And you need to find that what, whatever way that this works for you. I find that I need to speak out loud. If I speak out, if I don't speak out loud, I get too tired. Like I can't just use my an internal voice. Okay. I don't have an internal monologue that I can't control, but I do an internal voice that I can consciously use. And so I will use that to, um, start explaining things. But I could do it for a couple minutes, like maybe five minutes, and then I can start getting so tired that I need to stop. Um, there's a way, as described in the English human two point plus here on the subreddit of, using um sensory thought and i can do that and it actually feels very different to me my, my like my brain feels very different that is a more relaxed experience and i feel like the visuals can actually get more vivid but in my experience i generally like doing it with my voice because i feel like the results are more interesting uh like it kind of brings me in, in different stories like as an example um, I had one the other day where often when I close my eyes, um, I'll see like some sort of moving, swirling something. And very often I'll say like, oh, okay, I'm in a uh, big water slide. I'm going down this water slide and I feel the water and I see the different spirals of things. And it turns left and it turns right and eventually like drops into something. And when I drop into whatever thing it is, my brain creates a scene for me. It oh, cool. always just takes that long, about 30 seconds or so. And then like I'm in a scene that my brain has created, which is wild. Um, it's a weird way of kind of reducing the experience and realizing how oh, fun this one is. And uh, there was one I had yesterday where I'm looking at this. I had very strong visuals of being in this like underground lake, uh, cav cavern underground, with a big underground lake. And there was a little bit of like maybe a dock on one side of the lake, and there was a pathway that kind of curved and oh, wow. came to. Uh, and like an old kind of wooden cottage, and there's like a grandma type character. And, and I can do this in the perspective of, and I swim through the water, and I see a path here, and I get on the path, and I walk down the path, and I see all these different flowers. And you know, try to do as many as much sense as you can. You don't want to just go into a visual description land, which is uh, easy to do, I think. Um, it's, it's easier to not use all your senses. 
and then I have this character, and sometimes I'll, I'll find these characters, and 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 they will, uh, and I'll be talking through. This is why it's like a trance because I will be saying the words, but the characters might tell me something, and yeah. it's not something that was in my brain, and that's kind of wild, and I think that's the way that uh, when Wenger in the book that I learned this from explains is one of the ways that you can use this to help out your subconscious mind. Okay. It's like you can uh, ask your characters in your streets to give you advice and stuff like that. You can see what your brain comes up with. It's kind of in a way, like I'm looking into, <coughs> looking into lucid dreaming right now. And it's kind of in a way that I hear people talk about uh, lucid dreaming. I've never experienced a fully lucid dream. Maybe you just can taste it, but when people who can I can help you. Well, kind of seems like a similar kind of experience. Only in lucid dreams, or if you want something to appear, you think it's behind you. You turn around and you go through a portal or something. Um, I've never experienced this, so I don't really know. But in image streaming, it's more like you're speaking these things out loud. But the thing is, once you've done this for a long enough time, you start to not really be in control of the words that are coming out of your mouth. Like it, it really kind of your subconscious mind takes over and really puts you in like a trance like a state. And uh yeah, I found this to be an entirely fascinating and I think it's something that, you know, drug users and that kind of stuff would love to know about because you can access these kinds of I feel like transcendent states when you're just fully awake and sober and conscious. And it it is hard to get started. And I use a couple different aids. And sometimes, as I mentioned earlier, I will describe my environment before getting started. Uh, I find that this is easier when I listen to music. Um, so I have this uh, playlist I listen to on Spotify. Uh, it's called Brain Food. I found it. It has like, a lot of instrumental, um, kind of emotional, electronic, sometimes not electronic uh, tracks that it's very stimulating, there's a lot of texture in them, and I feel like the more stimulus, the easier it is to kind of just get lost in, into the experience. But if I really wanted to use this skill as a way to explore all memories or something like that, I probably would not use any music because I don't want the music to kind of flavor the experience. So, I wish it really does, you know? Uh, sometimes when I use it, I feel more like I'm walking this crazy DRM with a music video as opposed to something that I'm intentionally uh, creating myself. So that's image streaming. That's probably all I have to say on it. Honestly, I feel like I'm personally just at the tip of the iceberg because I experienced some amazing things, but I've really not done it any longer than two weeks at a time every couple months in the past nine years. And I'm trying to maybe do it a little bit longer now, so I don't know where this could go. I can kind of imagine where it can go, but I don't know where it can go. But what I will say is that when I do image streaming, it makes me way more sharp. My verbal processing skills get way higher. My ability to recall memories is skyrocket. So I understand the initial explanation that this is something that will help you um, develop your IQ or something like that. Again, I don't think about it like that. That's like a nice side benefit. What I really get out of it is the amazing, amazing uh, visual experience and the kind of unexpected and wild uh, things that my subconscious will show me. It's really, it feels like really a way of diving into your subconscious brain and, and it's fascinating in the same way that you could, uh, you could in like a, a dream, like a waking dream or something like that. But from what I've uh, talked to about waking dreams and normal yeah. daydreams and stuff, this is like a normal daydream on LSE. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it is. It's, it's really, uh, it's very unexpected and animated and wild and, and, uh, you know, like I'll see a bird and that bird will explode into feathers and the feathers will turn into frogs and the frogs will hop around and they'll go through the door and it's just <laughs> this big explosion yeah. of stuff. And then I end the end of the experience like, uh, you know, something it's only in 10 minutes, and I get up the end of 10 minutes, and you're like, wow, that was pretty freaking incredible, and then I just yeah. on my day. And it has this nice added passive benefit of allowing you to close your eyes, look what I can do right now, and see some visuals, okay? And that is awesome that it does that. But if I stop, then that goes away. I will lose it. But I know that I can get back again if I just start streaming again. So this is very comprehensive. I wasn't expecting to speak for this long. So if you stuck around this long, kudos for you. Good luck on doing this. If you have any questions, ask me below in the comments and read the book, The Einstein Factor, and the industry post on this forum. I think it will help me out a lot. Peace.
Okay. Yeah, I really like that video. I think that was a very, very comprehensive, at least a beginner's guide to image streaming. Uh, I hope y'all try it. Please, please try image streaming. It will change your life. Don't wait on me to tell you to do it. Just go ahead and try it. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, this, this is as far as we got on our painting. Uh, but I think it looks pretty cool. It kind of looks like an old gif. <laughs> but we'll fix it up. We'll fix it up. I promise. It'll look better, I think. Uh, all right. So your homework. Homework. That's right. You're going to have some homework today. This week. Until the next episode. Um, just keep working on your sky. Let's just do that. Um, and next week, we'll put in the... I'm sorry for all the beeping. We'll put in the monuments from Monument Valley. We'll do that and then see where we are. All right, so I think that's just what we're going to do today. So thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Um, doing so helps other people to discover this video. And thanks for coming on another adventure with me. This has been Adventures in Painting, Episode 8. Okay. Dust in the Wind. And I'm Justin, your host. And until next time, happy, happy trails. See ya.